The seven habits of health are the practical things that truly healthy people do on a daily and weekly basis. We're diving into habit number one, sleep well. So if you want to learn what impacts every part of your life, keep listening. Seven Habits of Health. It's been a minute since we addressed them on the podcast. And the reason that we want to dive back into these is just like the intro said, these are the daily and weekly things that a truly healthy person does. Culture right now is so focused on how to optimize their health and become the healthiest version of themselves. And these habits are the bare minimums, the things that Christians can do to truly remove unnecessary limitations and experience freedom through a healthy life. I want you to to paint just a 30,000 foot view for the listeners on the seven habits of health as we start to dive into the first one today, which is sleep well. Seven habits of health are the cornerstone of a truly healthy life. A truly healthy life is health in every area the way God designed it. So these seven things give us a framework, a template, a direction, um, on how to actually do that. Because when I say I want to optimize my body, mind, and soul, I want to be healthy physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally, spiritually, that's great. It's ambitious. It's a vision. But how? Because most people know what they should do, but many people lack um, the application part of it. So what mm-hmm. we've done is we've created this framework. So the first one is sleep. And the reason the first one is sleep is because these habits actually go from simplest to most complex. Now, we don't mean like order of priority or simplest as easy, but simplest as in the least amount of moving parts. It's the most tangible. It's the most like, okay, I understand it because you you either sleep seven to nine hours or you don't. And we're going to get into why that's important and how we do it. And then as we progress through the habits, they get a little bit more um, complex. There's greater tensions to manage. The applications look different from person to person. For example, habit number six is cultivating community. That's going to look different depending on your age, your gender, your season, your introvert versus extrovert um, personality. So that's why we say everybody, despite how old they are, and I know some people older than us um, might think, oh, I don't need seven nine hours of sleep. I can get by with six. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are. This isn't an Alex thing. This is a science thing. We all need to start with sleep. So we're going to start with sleep and then we're going to progress through the seven halves of health. But that's a quick overview of them and a little bit of an intro into, the, into sleep. Yeah. So last, last episode, if you have not listened, 67, because this is episode 68, was the framework. And it was all about how these seven habits are the framework to help you build a healthy body, mind, and soul. What that means is liking what you see in the mirror, loving the inner peace you feel, feeling connected to God, and embracing purpose in your life. That's practically like what that means, truthfully. So diving into habit number one, sleeping well, it is consistently getting seven to nine hours of sleep. And just like Alex said, this isn't a you know this isn't a him thing. This isn't a, a holo thing specifically. This is a science thing. And all of the research, especially as of late, is directing us towards how important sleep is. It literally impacts every area of your life. I love the way that Alex uh, really riffs on or talks about how uh, it impacts the body in terms of like every system, bodily system. So can you, Alex, can you just share exactly what bodily system that sleep impacts? (laughs) <laughs> like, can you just go line by line off your head? I mean, I'm not a walking textbook, but if I remember correctly, I believe there's 11 like bodily systems. There's the cardiovascular system. There's the um, respiratory system. There's the digestive system. There's the nervous system. There's the lymphatic system. There's the um, musculoskeletal system. There's the integumentary system. It impacts all of them. The, yeah. the few that I like to point out that are worth noting that are kind of impact some other areas is one, when there's daylight savings time, when we lose an hour of sleep globally, there's a 23% increase in heart attacks. Two, when you get less than six hours of sleep, 
your natural defense killer T cells, which is your immune system, those decrease by 70%. Meaning that's why like, oh, you're going to get sick because you didn't sleep well. Literally your immunity decreases by 70%. Another one, when you consistently get less than six hours of sleep, your body naturally makes more ghrelin, which is your I'm hungry hormone, your appetite hormone, and makes less leptin, which is your fullness hormone. So your lack of sleep actually impacts your digestive system because it it throws off your hormones saying, hey, I'm more hungry and I'm less full, resulting in eating more than necessary. Those are just quick three off the top of my head after all the research, but it's going to impact all the other physical systems, not even just the mind and soul that we can get into as well as far as I'm going to be more of a bitter person, more short, more on edge. I'm going to have not as much to give in my quiet time to Jesus. I'm not going to be as patient with um, my coworkers at work. There's a plethora of them. I don't think most people need to be convinced that they need to sleep well. It's just hard because we live in a culture of busyness, go, 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 exhaustion, wake up, you check your phone, you stay up late watching a show, and you just wake up just not as refreshed. So it's not necessarily about the sleep part. It's about the how part and the importance part because we're never going to get help from culture. So that's off the top of my head, Trevor. Yeah, that was good. There's a point in which I was going to say it affects the love and others system, the good husband system, the Amen. important, you know, the valuable worker system. But I, I lost my opportunity to be funny, so now it's not even funny. But I had to bring <laughs> it up because we're real on the podcast. This isn't we're not two uh, boring dudes just talking about health. We're actually pretty cool. Anyways, <laughs> hey, speak for yourself. We, <laughs> anyways, you're 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 pretty cool guy. Um, in terms of sleep, I love the way that you articulated it. One of the one of the biggest shifts that I see happening right now when it comes to sleep is that most of the generation that preceded us, so those I would say, you know, forty five and over, kind of went by the mantra of "I'll sleep when I'm dead." Yeah. And another way to say it is, "I'll I'll lose sleep to get ahead." I've heard both, and they they believe that sleep just wasn't necessary or that to be successful, quote unquote, we're not going to go into whatever that means to define it. You had to sacrifice sleep because you had more time in the day. But if you look at a lot of the studies now, it is pointing to how the high performers, the um, what, again, successful, you can determine that definition for yourself. People are doing is getting consistent quality sleep across uh, the week across their their life, and so that's leading to several different changes and benefits. What Alex mentioned earlier too. Everybody wants to look good in the mirror. If you're not sleeping well, you're really hurting your ability, your body's ability to do that. People people will just blatantly say on social media that you you're going to gain weight if you don't sleep seven or nine hours sleep. Well. The reason that is, is what Alex was talking to. It's the way that it impacts your hunger hormones, leading you to make more decisions on eating more food, which is you just intake in more calories. So over time, you you are going to gain weight. It's not like just because you sleep more, you, you are going to lose weight. It just helps regulate that hunger hormone. Same thing when it comes to muscle recovery and repair. If you're working hard in the gym, you can still put on muscle. You can still, you know, have a, a strong physique and build uh, build up your your movements in the gym. But it just is more challenging. It's it's way easier when you're sleeping seven and nine hours of sleep, which I think just I think it just applies to all things, all areas of your life. If you're consistently getting seven and nine hours of sleep and it's quality sleep, then everything's just gonna it, it's gonna be made a lot easier. Your ability to walk by the spirit is a lot easier when you're well rested your ability to give the lord your best in the time in the word or in prayer or your spouse or your family or your work all of these different things are impacted by your sleep i don't think we need to berate the listeners you know we don't need to convince anybody i think one of the most important things is just giving you guys tools or practical applications on on sleeping well and then addressing one of the more uh challenging parts of it is the tension to manage like how do you manage the tension yeah alex did you well, trevor hey before we go yeah, into that before we go into that i would love to add this one part that is crucial um 
the analogy I like to use that you were just talking about is the health battery. We talk about it here at Holo Health is I look at my capacity, my output as a battery, just like your phone. You charge your phone at night, you wake up, it's at 100%. That when I get a full night's sleep, for example, I went to bed last night at 8.45 and I was asleep at 8.45 and it was amazing. I woke up at 5.45 this morning and I felt ready to go. Like I was I was up and I had amazing quiet time because my battery was full. I was at 100%. What happens is not every single night I'm going to bed at 8.45. I might go to bed at 10.30 the nights I have late small group on every Tuesday night. So I wake up at 60%, 70%. The health battery analogy is when I am operating at 80, 90, 100% because I am well rested from a good night's sleep, I can more easily demonstrate peace and patience and gentleness and meekness and self-control and all the other fruits of the spirit. But when I am operating on 30%, 40%, 50%, it is way easier to revert to the flesh and not become a person of faith, hope, love, and the fruits of the spirit. So I have just realized I can operate better as a child of God when I'm sleeping better because my battery is full. Which leads me to the second point, Trevor, is God designed us to sleep well. This isn't just a science thing. All top performers, every single person, we all agree we need seven and nine hours of sleep. I literally was on Instagram earlier and John Deloney, shout out Dr. John Deloney, he literally had a post and I'm going to read it. He said, he said, do yourself a favor. Um, where is it? He said, do, do yourself a favor. Please love yourself enough to get seven to nine hours of sleep as often as you possibly can. A rested well, you is an optimal you. And I love so Dr. John. John Deloney. He is getting at the point that that we are designed to sleep well. God designed us to sleep well. When you go back to Genesis 1, God created a seven-day cycle. We are awake when it's daytime and we sleep when it's nighttime. God created the earth and the moon and the way they orbit and the sun to come up to naturally sleep when it's night and awake when it's day. Because when we sleep, we, we need melatonin to, t to drift us off to sleep and that's what happens, which is why sometimes we take the supplement melatonin um, to help us go to sleep melatonin actually releases from the absence of sunlight. So the more you dim your lights in your house and the more it gets dark at night is the, is why you get more tired. But with this digital revolution and with, and with common screens and our phones and everything, and even just lights in our house, it's easy to delay melatonin production because it's so bright out. But kind of going back to Genesis one is that you see how God created on day one, the the sun and the light and we're to awake when it's day and then we sleep when it's night and he created this natural rhythm for humans to follow we are limited in our human bodies we cannot go 24 7 we're not robots and we're not designed to so sleep has always been a priority for me but i feel like the priority increased for me once i realized god designed it for me like it really shifted its priorities and importance in my life. And I was like, oh, wait, this is a natural ingredient that God designed for me to live into. And it's sleep. And when I get those seven and nine hours of sleep, I am aligning my health with God's design of health. And so many more benefits come from it. So it aligns with scripture. It aligns with science. It is a way to experience more fruits of the spirit. We can become a better you and we sleep well. It's it's pretty, it's pretty important. Trevor, let's get, let's get into the, some of the applicational pieces. Yeah. The application piece is the, the first and foremost is getting seven to nine hours of sleep. That's, that's kind of the baseline. That's and the win. The, the simple, yeah. The win of, of habit number one, sleep well, but there's some serious uh, changes that an individual can make to impact the quality of your sleep as well. And so We'll dive into um, to some of those. The first one is going to be um, just keep it cool, dark, and quiet. Cool, dark, and quiet. Temperature um, is a very important aspect in terms of the quality of the rest. Your body uh, is going to respond well to when that temperature drops and is uh, allowing that internal body temperature to drop as well. And then your body naturally to wake itself up, warms its internal temperature, a little bit of science nerd for you, um, some facts for you, but just dropping the, the degrees in your home, a couple of degrees, uh, 30 or so minutes before bed is a great idea. Keep it cool, keep it dark, 
everybody knows that when a light goes off, whether it's a, a light in the hallway or your phone light or whatever it might be, it, it distracts your ability or it can cause you to to wake up. So keep in that that dark room. You could use blackout curtains. You could use an eye mask. That's out. That's an Alex and, and Hannah special. You could um, just remove light that that could potentially be exposed into the room. And then keeping it quiet, that's, uh, again, it's a noise factor. Something loud's going on outside of trains going by in, in uh, by your house, and it could, it could easily wake you up. So keeping a sound machine, some people wear earplugs. That that's kind of gets just kind of strange to me. I'm going to be honest. If I roll over and kill an earplug, it's like I've done a little it before. weird. I love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past I'm, you. But I'm for it. it. You, just trying to remove the noise that there potentially could be, uh, or or kind of overlay a, a very white noise type sound, yeah, um, to to keep it quiet, to keep the environment quiet and consistent. That's just a, yeah. a really uh, practically a couple couple tips, and then I'll toss it to Alex for a few more yeah. as well. Yeah, Trevor. The way we sum that up is just priming your environment. Um, the second one is minimizing the stimulants, and for you, your environment might be more important. For others, the stimulants might be more of an important thing to focus on because mm -hmm. your brain, Trevor, and this is a shout out to you. I love the analogy is your brain is like a plane and it needs to have ample runway to start descending to hit ground, which is asleep. We can't expect to be in the air and then just like a helicopter come down. Your brain's not a helicopter. It's a plane. So we need a gradual runway to go from on, which is your brain on, and then off, which is sleep because a lot of people that I've talked to have said, yes, I'm so tired because we're so physically exhausted, but my mind is racing. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times the stimulants are stimulating the mind or the brain. And most commonly they come from a screen, your phone, a show on screen, an iPad doing games, video games, or even work on your laptop. Anything that is asking your brain to be on is a hindrance to your sleep. And that's just a screen. It could also be alcohol, which diminishes the quality of your sleep. It could be caffeine. Um, it could be really any blue lights, but any kind of stimulant also light, um, is going to impact that. So for example, for me, we charge our phones, not in our bedroom downstairs. Our bedroom is upstairs. Um, we, so we don't have screens in there. We do have our iPad, which is our baby monitor, but we're hoping to get rid of that soon. Once our babies get a little bit bigger. Um, I don't drink caffeine. I also don't take naps past like three o'clock because after I take a nap, that's going to delay my sleep cycle, which is quote unquote, a stimulant, keeping my brain on, um, pushing that circadian rhythm even further back in the day. Um, I uh, try not to work. I try to read to give my brain a time to slowly digest. Um, Hannah and I at least have 30 minutes of like shower, get the house all around, connect, talk about what the next day looks like, completely technological, technologically free, house is dark, just so that we're slowly telling the brain to like, okay, hey, we're slowly coming down. Um, so priming your environment, minimizing the stimulants, your brain is like a plane, ease your way down. And then the third one, Trevor, is we like to say, just have a routine. Your, your, mm -hmm. your brain is significantly talented at picking up rhythms and cues. It's how we create habits. Um, cause right. your brain wants to basically shortcut things out of your conscious memory into your subconscious to automatically move one thing to the next, um, which is how a habit is created. So when you have a routine of every single night, you're going to dim the lights, have a glass of water, hop in the shower, brush your teeth and read your book in bed. Your brain is like, okay, I'm going to start slowly producing more melatonin. I'm going to slowly start settling down. I'm going to slowly start like decreasing the stress in my body because I know it's about to time. I know it's about time to recover, rest and sleep. So have a routine. Would you, have, would you add anything to the routine part, Trevor? Yeah, I would just say don't overcomplicate it. If there's not something yeah. existing already, then just choose something and start to build that into your, your nightly rhythm. Uh, it could be as simple as reading a book. It could be as simple as mobility work. It could be um, spending time in praying. prayer. It could be talking. Yeah, to, a great one. Yeah. yeah, it could be talking to your spouse if, if uh, that's the environment that you live in. So I just I did what it could be writing as well. I know some people that that write um, journaling, but it, but it, yeah, journaling. It should it should be something that allows you to slow down. Uh, and it kind of requires that of you, um, both the mind and the body slowing down. So uh, just yeah. don't overcomplicate it. Choose one thing, 
And if you're looking to build this into a rhythm, my encouragement is to start with like five to 10 minutes and do that before bed and just start to build the, the consistency of doing it rather than trying to be super intense with your volume or doing too much. And it just be like, man, I hate reading for an hour before bed. Well, it's like, well, you, who said you have to do an hour? Again, the, the, the little things when it comes to health, this is super true for every area of the, the seven habits of health, but the body, mind, and soul, the little things done consistently over time make a significant impact. And so if you have five minutes every night before bed, you're spending reading one, awesome. You, you're going to make it through some books, yeah. but two, you're really allowing uh, the, the plane to land, just like we, we gave in that analogy a minute ago. Some things I want to kind of round third in this conversation with is just the tension to manage. This will be kind of how we're ending the the conversation here, Alex, is not every single night you're going to go to bed at 845 and wake up at 545. You know, that's just not, that's not real life. That's fantasy world. And maybe some people like over. Hey, that was real life for me this morning. Yeah, I know, but that's not every single night for you. Oh, it. It wasn't the night before, no. Yeah, exactly. And last night I stayed up until midnight and woke up at six forty-five. So it, it's just a it's a tension to manage because if you choose to prioritize one area of your health or one habit of your health over others, something is going to pay the price or have consequences yeah. for that. So just take for example, I you know if I choose to go to bed at nine instead of midnight, I'm sacrificing time with people that the, the weekend that I'm here for is all about. That, that's a negative consequence that is not, uh, it, especially as a believer, that, that is not the, the, the decision that should be made. The decision that should be made is to cultivate community, embrace in those relationships. Yeah. Because I can always get another good night's sleep the next time. So it, it's important to remember not every night's going to look like this perfect uh, sleep routine and rhythm and getting the, the consistently seven to nine hours. But again, the, the goal is consistency, not perfection. And so yeah. we're looking at 80%. Again, if we're, we're trying to label something, we're going to say 80% or more is consistent. Okay. Just like any other area, 17 out of 21 meals. If you eat three per day, seven a week, that's 80%. That's consistency. That's not perfection. We're not shooting for, for, for perfection because if we are, again, we're over prioritizing one area at the expense of the other. Yeah. So th there's a grace that comes with sleeping well, and you're going to hear that theme at, when it comes to the other seven habits of health as well. But this is one I feel um, yeah. every week. <laughs> Trevor, you use the language attention to manage. It's one of our correct understandings here that health is attention to manage because it's holistic. We have a body, mind, and soul. It's attention to manage on which area needs the attention. It's never going to be a problem to solve. We're never going to fix it. We're never going to arrive. It's attention to manage. The phrase or the saying we like to say here, Trevor, about what you just talked about is optimization, not prioritization. Optimize over prioritize, meaning we are going to optimize our sleep. We're going to aim to get seven to nine hours of sleep and be optimal. Like you said, a residue is an optimal you, Dr. John Deloney. But what happens when I have company at my house once a year that I only see every 365 days a year. I'm going to stay up to, like Trevor said, till midnight and engage in life-giving conversations until we're so tired that we need to go to sleep because it, health is attention to manage. We're going to optimize because my mind and my soul are craving those life-giving um, conversations. So optimization over prioritization. The question that we like to ask our collective and our clients and in our coaching is which area of your health needs attention today? And that takes self-awareness. That takes slowing down. That takes deep reflection. That, that takes feedback from others. But which area of your health needs attention today? And Trevor, kind of how we want to end this conversation is we actually help people do that. We've created a tool that every single week you will get instant clarity at where you are at in each habit. Habit number one is sleep well. There's six others. If we want to optimize our sleep with the, all the other ones, 
We need to know where each level is at, and that's going to culminate in what we call the True Health Score. We have what's called the True Health Assessment that literally takes less than five minutes, and you self-rank each area over the past seven days, and it's going to give you the numerical empirical data emailed right to you on what this looks like. We do this every single week in the collective as far as all a bunch of other truly healthy behaviors and do other coaching calls. So if this is something that interests you and you want to kind of get your sleep right or find out where your levels are, we encourage you to join the collective because we do this every single week for to help you. Yeah. And if you're listening to this episode, the practical takeaway is, is just do a little bit of a sleep audit, if you will, and look at your sleep, how many hours of sleep you're consistently getting and are you priming your environment? Are you setting your yourself up for success uh, with the environment, keeping it cool, dark, and quiet? Are you minimizing the stimulants or are, are we on the phone or working or emailing or, or watching the show up into the moment of, of going to bed? And then do you have any consistency? Is there a consistency in the time that you're going to sleep, the time you're waking up or the things you're doing before bed? Those are the things that we'd encourage you to look at. And again, if you're wanting to build a rhythm into maybe some things you're doing before bed or minimizing those stimulus, start small, smart, start with five, 10, 15 minutes and build yeah. from there. And then every Sunday, my encouragement would be to look at the week ahead and, and look at what nights am I going to try to get seven to nine hours of sleep? What nights am I going to be cultivating community in those deep, rich conversations? Yeah. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Like Alex mentioned, if you want help learning how to balance every area of your health so that you can have a healthy body, mind, and soul, then check out the show notes because we've included the link to the Holo Collective, what Alex was referencing and talking about. But we'll see you in the next episode.